All right. So, guys and girls, a few things. I like turtles. So, today would be Wednesday, right? So, I'm going to go over. It was page 65, 66. I'm going to go over as much as I can on this. Okay. And then I will collect it tomorrow uh, once you guys have it completed. Uh, today, I will assign the. Um, is this true, Mr. Stark? Yes. I don't know. I didn't do it. 16 times 17 is 1,617. Page. So, this. This is the review, okay? So then tomorrow, Thursday, I will go over the review. And I will give us, assign the practice test on this day. And then on Friday, we will do our test, okay? So that's the schedule for the rest of the week. Are you sure you don't want to present this on Monday? Yep. Because I have like three tests on Friday. Yeah, you'll be all right. No, that's not right. You'll be all right. All right, so. It is? What? The test is right. With the review. Yeah, it's got the test on the Yeah. Yeah. It's just on Monday. Oh. See? That's Monday. Yeah. That's Monday. Uh-oh. Yes. 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 So, there yes, we go. you're the best. That'll work. All right. I have you speaking about it. Okay. So, and actually, this will be assigned then tomorrow. And then page uh, 67, 68 will assign for today. All right. So, looking at the homework, um, and I know some of you are struggling with this. Some of you are getting it. Some of you are kind of in between. So let's start figuring it out. Our first thing we need to do this problem, we want to figure out what two numbers to plug in for x that would make the whole thing zero. So I have to factor it. That's always the first step. So my magic number is what? What's the magical number? Negative 8. In order to get to a magical number of negative 8, you have to have a positive and a negative. So the factors 8 are 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Which of those work that add up to negative 2? 2, two and 4. 2 and 4. Which one has to be negative? 4. Okay. So then you have x squared minus 4x plus 2x minus 8. Factor this. So x is here. And then it looks like I can factor a 2 out of here. So what's the factored version going to be? x x minus 4 and x plus 2, yeah. right? So I think a lot of people are totally OK up to that point. And then we say, hey, OK, you solve this by using the zero product property. You're like, wait, time out. Well, no, you just take each binomial and solve it. There's one answer. And the other answer, you do this. x equals negative 2. So if I plug either of these values back in, I'm going to get 0. If I even plug them back in here and here, the whole thing comes out to 0. That's why the zero product property works. OK? Now where I saw some people screw up on number 2 was this. They start factoring this right away. Yeah, you got to move it over. You can't have it has to be equal to zero. So what you're going to do is you're going to add this 10 here and here, and then you get x squared plus 7x plus 10. It's equal to zero. Now that's going to work, okay? And I'll just write out what the will factor down to, and that means x equals negative 2, x equals negative 5. Okay, and again, if you're having trouble with factoring, go back and take a look at the videos on factoring. Figure it out. Ask about it. Um, so number three, 
you know, if you want to work that out, I'll do that tomorrow. Let's take a look at number four. Why does number four get a little goofy? Yeah, there's not this last term. So what should I do at this point? Factor what? An x. So you're looking for a greatest common factor. So this is the same as this. So then this x is equal to 0. So you have x equals 0. That's one of your solutions. And your other solution is this. So if I plug 0 or 3 back into the original, it becomes 0. There's all kinds of different manipulations I've seen students try and do on this. It's like, oh, I'll add 3x to both sides, and then I'll solve it. How? Well, it works. No. OK. Number five, this gets goofy. What should I do? Move the 8x. No, move the 8x over first. It's negative 8x. Right? You want it equal to 0. Yeah, it's positive. Oh, that's a negative there? That's a positive there? Thank you. Now I can do a greatest common factor. Because you don't want a greatest common factor on either side. Because when you distribute, you don't distribute over an equal sign. You distribute over a quantity. OK, so then we get to there. Agreed? Yep. So that means that 2x equals 0. So what's x equal to here? 0. Yeah, all you do is divide these side by 2. But x plus 4 equals 0. x equals negative 4. So there's my two solutions. So if I were to plug those solutions up into the very top, it's going to work. You plug 0 in, you get 2 times 0 squared. That's 0 equals negative 8 times 0. 0, zero equals 0. That's true. You plug negative 4 in, that's also going to work. But then Gentry pointed this out to me yesterday. He came and said, hey, I don't think this one works. OK, let's take a look at it. OK, so the first thing you probably did, though, is what? Greatest common factor. So you factor out a 2x, and that leaves you 2x squared plus 3x minus 6, right? So that means that 2x equals 0, so x is equal to 0. So that right there is a solution. If I plug that back in, I get it equal to 0. But here's the problem with this on here. Let's try and factor this. Well, my magic number is negative 12. In order to get to a negative, I have to have a positive and negative when I multiply. So then I'm going to take all the factors of 12. So that's 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Which of those would work, one being positive, one being negative? None. So this right here won't factor. So you've been told to call it prime. But the thing is, you actually have this as one of your solutions. So yes, it won't factor there. So what? this is what this graph were, would look like if you were to graph it. So it crosses here. So this graph actually does something like this. Notice where, how many times it crossed the x-axis? Yeah, right there at the 0. And then it has a little OK? And this means that there's some sort of solution that's taking place. If you go and try and solve that, you would actually find that the solutions are square root of negative numbers, which don't cross the x-axis, but they make a little squiggly. Okay. So if this kind of, if you had this type of problem on the test, this might have been a misprint on our part. But if you just in case you had it, you have to realize this is one of the solutions I'm looking for. And then if you were to tell me the rest of it's prime, I would say both of those answers, put them both. And you're going to get it correct. Number seven got goofed up a little bit and caused a smidge of panic. What can you do with this? Yeah, it's nothing. So I could rewrite the whole problem to be this. Where did the zero x go? Well, zero times x is nothing. So I don't have to put it. Yeah, and then this becomes the difference of two squares, right? x plus 7, x minus 7. So I get x plus 7 equals 0. 
x minus 7 equals 0. So I find that x equals negative 7 and x equals positive 7. And that's how it works out. Anything else from the front side, 1 through 10, that you're not sure about? What? Good? All right. Let's go to the back side. Is there anything on the back side you would like to take a look at? Can we do numbers in sequence? Which one? Wait, what? No number nine on there. I don't know. We can't count. What do you think I should do with this one first? Can I start factoring it right now? No, because I want to move that 45 over by subtracting it. And then this would have factored down to this. which gives you x equals 9, x equals negative 5. And I don't know if I have to go through the whole factoring thing for you. Can you do the Yep. 11. Number 11, you have x squared minus 13x plus 42 equals 0. Magic number is 42, right? It's positive. So I need either positive, positive, or negative, negative, which should work. Why is the negative negative work? What sticks out? That right there, right? So 1 and 42, 2 and 21, 3 and what is that, 14, and 6 and 7. Which one works? 6 and 7 that are both negative, right? So I get x squared minus 6x minus 7x plus 42. What do I have in common here? What do I have in common here? A negative 7, right? So I get x equals 6 and x equals 7. So if I plug either of those into the original, the whole thing becomes 0. What happened on number 13? Yeah, why is it complex? Yeah, you get a square root of negative. So that is, what well, we're looking at number 13 is something that we could say is the sum of two squares. The sum of two squares does not factor. If it does not factor, you can't solve it. Okay, if that was x squared minus 1, you'd get x plus 1, x minus 1. But that one doesn't solve, so number 13, you just have to say it's a prime situation for right now. Right. Yeah, on that one, if you win. Minus 1, you get x squared equals negative 1. Take the square root, so you get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which you're exactly right. It actually is plus or minus i for an answer if you want to deal with that. I'm like, i, yeah, i stands for imaginary. 12? 12 is the difference of two squares, so factor to x plus 9, x minus 9. And then go from there, I guess. It doesn't matter. Right. Two x two squares. Which one? 17. Taxi, did I help you on 12? Does that make sense? Okay. 14, looks like I have to factor out the greatest common factor. I have to factor an x out, so I get x and then x minus 5. So one of the answers is 0, the other one's 5. Number 10, do the same thing. You have to factor an x out, so you get x and then x plus 10. So the answers to 15 are 0 and negative 10. Let's look at 16 before we go to 17. What do you think we should do on number 16? Combine how? Can I combine across the equal signs? Nope. Oops, plus 2x and that's minus x squared, right? All right, so I'm going to move this over, and I'm going to move this over. Is that OK? What does this become over here? Zero. So that's what? 3x squared minus 6x. Greatest common factor is a 3x. I get 3x equals 0, so x equals 0. And then x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 2. So those are the two solutions where it would be equal. 17, you wanted to see? Is that someone asked for that one? All right, number 17. 2x squared minus 5x equals 12. What should I do first? Yeah, bring the 12 over by subtracting it. Notice it has an opposite sign now. Okay? What's my magic number? 
Almost. Negative, negative. negative 24. In order to get to a negative, what do you know about the signs? Positive, negative. So I get 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Which two work to add up to negative 5? 3 and 8. 3 and 8. Which one's negative? 8. Cool. So I'm going to get 2x squared plus 3x minus 8x minus 12. What do I have in common there? x. What do I have in common here? Negative. Four. Four. Good. 2x and both those signs need to change. So I get 2x plus 3 and x minus 4. So that gives me 2x plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 3. And divide by 2. So negative 3 over 2 is one answer. And then the other answer is x equals 4. Cool? All right, so this, that worksheet right there, so that's page 60, page 65, 66. That needs to be complete by tomorrow. And then what I'm also assigning is page 67, 68. Oh, you're not collecting No, so that way you can utilize this. So this is going to be very similar to this, but I will check both those off tomorrow. Cool? And I got through what I wanted to get through today for you. Sweet. Those nice little tiny.